Steve. So, as Steve was telling you, when we uh, released QuickTime 3 this year, we really moved aggressively into the streaming, uh, streaming media space on the Internet, providing a great collection of low bitrate technologies, things like Sorensen, um, QDesign, Qualcomm, and Roland. Um, and, and that really gave us a great foundation in file-based multimedia. We want to move into the live space. So what we'd like to do today is show you a demonstration of some new QuickTime streaming technology that we've put together. What I've got over here is a QuickTime, you can bring the screen up, thank you, is a QuickTime streaming transmitter, it's a little broadcast app, um, and I'm going to ask actually Steve to stand here and sort of make this into Steve TV, and I'm going to go to the other end of the podium here and... Be part of the demo. <laughs> yeah. So let's just bring up Internet Explorer, and we can see over here, if we just bring up QuickTime Streaming now on the other screen, a little penguin, we hit play, it'll go and connect, and in just a moment, we should have Steve over here. Now if Steve moves here, you can see on the other side, with a momentary delay, Steve coming through. This is a live broadcast being done in QuickTime, being received in any web browser. <laughs> Now, for the, next, for the rest of the demonstration, we're going to take down the transmitter, but what I want you to remember is those three buttons down there that say Pro, Go, and Woe, because Steve is going to click them later and you're not going to see it. So we can have the client on both screens now. Thank you. So having QuickTime technology, you know that the streaming technology works in a web browser, but as a developer, you want to put this technology into your own application. So you might be thinking to yourself, this looks cool, but how much work am I going to have to do to make this work in my app? So we'd like to show you how easy this is going to be. We have an existing document in Microsoft Word. We've just embedded a QuickTime movie. Now, this isn't a normal QuickTime movie. It's just a reference back to the server where Steve is standing. So when I click here to start this, what it will do again is just go make a connection. And in Word, I have Steve Jobs live on stage at the WWDC. This is really important because this means that streaming video live events aren't something that only happens in a web browser. They're something that you can embed into your product just by building in QuickTime support today with no additional changes. I'd like to show you one more thing. For those of you who have been following QuickTime um, for the last seven years, really, since we've been at these conferences, you know that we don't like to just do straight sound and video. We want to do a little bit more to take advantage of some of the unique capabilities of the Macintosh, to take advantage of some of the unique features of QuickTime. So here in the web browser, we actually have two frames. And you will remember, and we've got Steve again, you'll remember that in the broadcast app, we had some buttons down below that said Pro, Go, and Woe. So I'm going to ask Steve to click on one of those now. And I want you to watch the other frame in the browser. I'll step way away from oh, the computer. Coming now. So Steve can actually control my computer remotely and make something display in the browser as he's making a presentation. This kind of capability, it's really hard to demo when your CEO is making faces on stage. <laughs> this kind of capability is really important because in a, in a learning situation, a presentation situation, there's more than just the video. There's the slides and so forth. If you can get those to look great in an HTML page, you can use those tools instead of reducing everything to video where you may suffer some quality loss on the Internet, for example. So QuickTime Streaming, a live solution for QuickTime come in the fall, will integrate into your app, will integrate into your browser, and will provide a great solution for delivering not just sound and video, but all the kinds of multimedia you expect from QuickTime. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Doesn't that stuff look hot? Okay. Next is Java. We want to do three things with Java. The first one we want to do is unify the JVM. There are lots of Java virtual machines on Macintosh, and users get confused, and app developers get confused, and it's a mess. So we'd like there to be one. And we have been working with all of the developers to integrate the features they need. And I'm really pleased to report that Microsoft and Netscape and MetroWorks and Symantec are all going to be standardizing on our unified Java virtual machine 
is coming out in the Allegra time frame. I think this is really important, and this is the JVM that will ship in the Allegro time frame this fall. The second thing we want to do is make it compatible. And we work with two great partners, Sun and Microsoft, to get the best of everything for our customers. And we are pleased to announce that, again, the Java that will ship in the Allegro time frame will be 1.1.6 plus Swing. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Right? And lastly, we want to make our Java fast. Now, this is not so easy. We went out and we measured things on the fastest G3 you can get, 300 megahertz, and the fastest Pentium 2 you can get, 400 megahertz. And here's what we found. When we shipped 8.0 last a year ago, basically, a little less than a year ago, 272 caffeine marks. Not so good. When we ship 8.1 in January, this January, we thought, oh my God, it's three times faster. Aren't we great? No, we're not great. Because Navigator on that 400 megahertz Pentium delivers almost 3,000 caffeine marks, 2,700, over 2,700 caffeine marks. And Internet Explorer running on that 400 megahertz Pentium delivers almost 3,900 caffeine marks. So, no, we're not so great. And we've got to stop measuring ourselves relative to ourselves, which we've done. And we've been working our tails off for several months now. And I'm incredibly delighted to tell you that the Java that we're going to ship in the Allegro time frame is much better. As a matter of fact, we have it running internally already at over 3,100 caffeine marks today. And I pledge to you, there are no guarantees in life, but boy, are we working hard. We are going to pick up that extra 791 caffeine marks before we ship this in the Allegro time frame. And our goal is to be second to none in performance by this fall with our job. And we think this is pretty important. <clears throat> and now, Mac OS. Most important piece of software we've got. Now, 10 months ago, <clears throat> when I got to Apple, a lot of people thought that this was the future of the Mac OS. Apple had been saying this for a few years. It was crazy because the Mac OS has 22 million customers. About double that number of users. It is one of only two high volume operating systems on the planet, and it has 12,000 applications with developers who make their livelihood from it. Far from being something that we should discard, it was very rapidly apparent that this is our crown jewel. It needs to be polished and extended. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, what was this Rhapsody thing? <clears throat> Rhapsody was some great technology, some really good technology. And what it was, was it ran old apps, i.e. Mac apps, and it would run these new apps that would give you all these great new features. The problem was, when you ran the existing Mac apps under this blue box thing, it, you didn't get any of the new features. And when you, to get the new features, you had to rewrite your entire app. Nobody wanted to do this. And so we came to the conclusion that Rhapsody was great technology, but it didn't give us what we wanted. It was going in the right direction, but it didn't go far enough. And so we decided to go further. Now, what do people want? They want an advanced OS that runs Mac apps, right? Is that what you want? That's what people want. Now, 